Well, praise the Lord. I think you all know my brother went to be with the Lord. And I know as a fact he was right with the Lord, loved Jesus. In fact, uh, I remember my brother Tony and I praying for him to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit a long time ago on his uh, living room floor or wherever it was, but it was some place where, you know, you don't have to be in church to have God minister to you. In fact, I remember, uh, I think me and Tony and I think it was Joe Sanfilippo, we were at the bank with my brother Joe, and I don't even know why we were there. But he said he didn't feel good. He needed prayer. I said, oh, you want to pray for? He says, yeah. We laid hands on him in the middle of the bank and started praying. And he's going, you know, you guys are crazy. But, yeah, we are. You know, a thought before we pray here. We're in the world. We're not of the world. I want to be of Christ. I want to be a Christian. I want to belong to God. I want to be part of his kingdom. I don't care about being part of the world. And be careful. It's easy to get caught up in this. You want to you want to be saved. You want all the benefits of the kingdom. You want all of that to be granted to you through Jesus Christ. But you want to be accepted in the world also. And you want the world to admire you. And you want to win the favor of the world. And you want the world to look on you and think you're a good guy and this, that, and other. The Bible says if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. We don't hate the world. I'm not part of that game. I'm not part of that trying to be somebody. I'm want to be a child of God, want to honor God. If he exalts you, he exalts you. If he pulls you down, he pulls you down. God, have your way in my life. We want to inherit eternal life. And I want you to understand this about Jesus. He is love incarnate. And the only way you have victory and overcome and become a mature Christian is to be full of the love of God that surpasses knowledge. We want to resort back to knowledge when we don't want to deal with our own attitudes, when we don't want to deal with our own nature, when we get judgmental and we start judging everything and regarding everything with contempt. And we don't even know we're backsliding. We think we're being right. Again, get a hold of these scriptures. Show me a man that's right in his own eye and there's more hope for a fool. Be careful about your arrogant attitude, thinking you know everything and you got it right and man, this guy's wrong, that's wrong. Hey, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner. Open my eyes that I might see. Lord, let your love fill my heart and let me give that love out and watch what happens to your life. Father, Lord, I thank you for the years that I got to spend with my brother Joe and Lord, I thank you that he gave his heart to you. Lord, I pray for his family that they might find peace in knowing that he's with you. Lord, that you might comfort them. And Lord, I just thank you for the thousands of people that he influenced with his love and his care. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that what he sowed would continue to grow. Uh, Lord, I pray that your church, Lord, and the church I'm concerned about is this church, even though the church universal is also in my heart. Lord, that we would become everything we're to become, that we would do all that we're supposed to do, that you would be seen through your church, that you would be understood through your church, that people would know these are people that have been with Jesus because they see Christ in you. So, Master, have your way in our lives. Be glorified in all that's said and done, and we'll give you the praise, and honor, and glory. We ask your blessing. We ask your anointing. We ask your revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Please be seated. You know, as a pastor, and I also really speaking to you, heads of the households, you men, what I'm going to say about me applies to you. You know, as a pastor, it's my job to get you to heaven. The only way I can do that is for me to get there. I can take you with me like Jesus took, is taking us with him. To, he already arrived. But it's my job to guide, to lead, to direct, to help you achieve salvation. Now, again, the way you do that is to go there yourself. You can't bring it, you can't push people past you into heaven. You can only bring them to where you're at. To go any further, they got to find somebody that's ahead of you. So, you know, as as a pastor, again, and I believe all pastors have this this. It's their job to, see, to get you to heaven. Now, you know what I mean? To, to equip you to get to heaven. You know, Jesus is the Savior. So you know, understand that in, in the right way that I'm hoping to communicate it. 
But as a pastor, I've got to make sure of this. And here's the hard part. I'm going to make sure I get to heaven. But I don't want to let the body that I have oversight of go to hell. Come on, there's, there's in the scripture that says that every work will be tested and the work can be burned up, but you can be saved. The pastor can be saved because you're, you know, what's, what's sad is as in this Christian walk, as we walk and as we grow in grace, uh, I'll look beside me, a little behind me or whatever, and I see some brothers and sisters and all that. But there are some of you that you've got to keep going back for. You know, you're lagging too far behind. You're still stuck where you were. Get about it. And, and, and your, your fathers, your heads of the households, it is your responsibility to get your children to heaven. Not mine, it's yours. And it's not going to happen if you're not doing this thing at home. If you're not praying at home, if you're not blessing your food, if you're not keeping the same behavior, if you're not having the right conversation, if you're not loving your wife, if you're not praying with your children, if you're not bringing God at home, it's not going to happen because you come here. You're just going to be double condemned because you've heard and not done. So I'm telling you, fathers, husbands, moms, do what you're supposed to do. Be what you're supposed to be. Your children hear this message and might understand it better than you do. And I'll tell you one thing to understand. They understand this when they see you not doing it. If they see you not living what you're supposed to live, they're going to imitate that. You can teach what you know and you're going to produce what you are. You might not like what you produce. Now, I want to say this in light of that. Regardless of what you produce, it is never too late to pick it up and do it right. If you fall down, you get up. If you mess up, you brush yourself off, you say, Jesus, forgive me, and you keep going. You never, never stop. Don't let anything stop you from this Christian walk. You know, Christ in you, the hope of glory. What is that? Love in you. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Holy love is in my heart. That has to manifest. That has to come out. And the only thing that gets in the way of that love is my own mind and my own emotions and my own judgments about things instead of yielding to love and doing what love would have you to do. You've got to die to self and let the love flow. Love people. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love your children. Love your wife. And I'm not talking about with an ungodly love. You love them, love them enough to correct them. You love them enough to minister to them. You love your children enough that if they need a spanking, you give them a spanking. You love them enough that if they need a hug, you give them a hug. You always do what's appropriate. There's an appropriateness about love. There's an appropriateness about Christ, and we're to be appropriate. That's including how you dress, how you behave. I mean, there's times I watch Christians, and I'm going, why are you dressing like the world? Do you really admire cleavage? Do you really admire tight pants and your butt hanging out? I mean, do you, do you really think that's the Christian way? Like, I can be a Christian, and I can be cool in the world too. Can you? I'm not going to take that chance. But we do that. I would say to you ladies and to you, 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 you girls, you want to know how to dress? Ask your dad or ask your husband, how is this? And I challenge you husbands and dads, tell the truth. You go, oh, I don't want to upset them. Those are too tight or this is too short or this is that and that. that uh, it's okay. They're going to be upset. Cowards don't go to heaven. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to go. <laughs> but I also challenge you ladies, honey, what do you think? He might tell you the truth. He's supposed to tell you the truth. He's a wash his wife with the water of the word. What's that mean? In love, tell you the truth. Not for the world, not even for self. Is God glorified with the way you're dressed, with the way you look, the way you behave? Is God glorified in that? So, do what you're supposed to do. And again, I say to you men, the disposition and attitude you have in your home, the spirit you walk in is way more important than what you do. You say, man, I work 14 hours a day and I bring home the money and I do, well, that's wonderful. But are you cranky? Are you grabby? Crabby? Are you judgmental? Are you short-tempered? Are you too tired to be bothered?
Does your family know what's going on in your life? Do they see the reality of Christ in you? I pray they do, and you need to pray, Lord, help me. I pray one of my daily prayers, especially before church on Sunday, like Saturday night, Friday, when I'm getting ready for this, I go, Lord, I can't do this without you, and Lord, here's the truth. I don't want to do it without you. I am not interested in being pastor, teacher, and beaver. I want to glorify you with my life. And if doing this is what does it, that's what I want to do. If it, but if you're not with me, if you don't open my eyes, if you don't let me see, I don't want to do it. And Lord, give me the courage and enough love to tell the truth. You know, the devil makes accusations. He's the accuser of the brethren. He'll say things like, that's bondage. He calls bondage, liberty. what's liberty? He calls bondage. It's never a bondage if it, by your free will, you are doing what you believe God to have you to do. That is freedom and liberty. That's what you were created to do. Bondage is when you do what you don't want to do. But I pray that you align your wants and your will and your desires to do what the word of God says. And, and that the Holy Spirit opens your eyes and you understand what, God, what the word is saying and what it requires of you. You know, we're to live this life as a Christian. We don't come to church and we're a Christian here. You're a Christian 24-7. You're a Christian everywhere you go. People should know you're a Christian. And if you're ashamed of the gospel, he'll be ashamed of you. Understand something. God doesn't lie. I don't know how, if you, how you take that. I don't want to lie, and I know God is much greater than me. He doesn't lie. And if he says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. You know what? If you're ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of you. You know what that means? He's not going to confess you before his father and before the angels. You're going to be out there without protection. By the way, you do have guardian angels. He gives his angels charge over you. They take care of you. If you're his, if you're his children, his children are taken care of. But his children love their father. His children love his word. His children embrace his word. We desire to please God. I don't desire to please self. You get, do you know when you desire to please yourself, that's a mindset on the flesh? You desire to please God and you walk in that and you're going to be blessed. You can't stop the blessings from coming. They're going to overtake you. You don't even have to worry about the blessings. You know, the old scriptures, we went through that era of faith where they said, name and claim it. Well, you can do that. But all you got to do is walk by faith in, 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 in the Lord and he's going to give you the desire of your heart. You don't have to name it and claim it. It'll overtake you. You fulfill the law by the love of God that shed abroad in your heart. We walk in love. Now, I'm going to read you some scriptures from the day of Pentecost. We're talking about power today. Every really name of this message is power. And most Christians, when we think about power, we want power we want, I want the power that when I pray for somebody, they get well. I want the power that when I speak, it affects lives. I want power. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are from God. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to glorify God, not to empower you. The Bible says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But that power isn't for the, for the gifts. The gifts God gives severally as he wills. God, whenever he wants to, he gives gifts. I mean, I've told you the story many times. I prayed for a paraplegic boy in Indonesia, and he got well. And it wasn't about my power. We prayed. The Holy Spirit granted the gift of miracles, and a miracle happened. I got to see it. I got to participate in it. But it wasn't my power. It was a whole lot of thank you, Jesus. Like, like wow, did you see what the Lord did? That's the gifts. You know, if you speak in tongues, it's a gift, but use it to grow your character. Use the gift of tongues to pray when you don't know what to pray, but you got this burden on you, you don't know what it is. He knows what it is, so get on your knees and pray in tongues. Go ahead and do that. But don't speak in tongues out loud for people to see that you speak in tongues. The gifts of the Spirit are real, and they're here, and God uses them when he will. Come on, I've seen healings, I've seen word, prophetic words, I've, I've seen all this. I've seen demons cast out. I've seen all that stuff. But it's not there a toy to play with to show everybody, look, look how close I am with God. I could do this and I could do that. It's, it's not about that. It's all about glorifying the Lord. The power we receive is to become Christ-like. 
That's the power. If you don't mature, you can prophesy till you're blue in the face, and if you don't become Christ-like, you're not going to heaven. Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do this? And he says, I never knew you. You know what? They really did prophesy in his name, but he didn't know them because they didn't keep the commandments. They didn't honor his word. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll obey my word. Have you fallen in love with the word yet? Do you love the word of God when you read the scriptures? It's just, wow, this is life. This is real. This is good. It's by his word he created the heavens and earth, and by his word we are what we are, and by his word is salvation. But you can't understand the word without the Holy Spirit, and it's the spirit of the word. It's the spirit that gave the word. Now that I have the spirit, I can understand the word. In my own flesh, you can't understand the word. People without the spirit debate the scriptures forever, and they never come to a conclusion because there is no conclusion because it's not a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. When you have the spirit of God, all of a sudden it starts making sense to you, it starts flowing together from Genesis to Revelation. There's a flow and an understanding and a revelation that comes. You can't even know who Jesus is until God reveals it to you. You can't understand God unless your eyes have been opened to see him. How do, how do you get that? Walk by faith. Do what you know you need to do. Do what you know is right. I don't care if it's something as simple as bless my food, O oh Lord. Wh whatever it is, if the Lord wants you to call somebody or just read the scripture today, do what you're supposed to do. Let it become a normal part of your life. I don't even want to start my day without reading the scriptures. Read the scripture every day. Read commentaries every day. You say, why, you're a pastor. No, I'm a Christian first. I'd still do that whether I was a pastor or not. I'm doing that because I want to be ground in the word. I want to understand the word. I want the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me, to show me the beauty of his kingdom, and to understand. And he gives you great understanding, gives you insight. Gives you everything pertaining to life. Everything. But, you know, they asked Jesus about, they tried to do a trick question. You know, if this brother died and his brother married his wife because he didn't have any children, then he died. And the other brother married his wife and they didn't have any children. Married with that and seven brothers and they all married the wife. By the way, that is a, a scriptural thing that in the Old Testament, if, if your brother died and didn't have children, you, you married his wife and had children for the sake of the brother. Not They weren't your own children. They were his children. God wants us to go on forever. But that's, that's what they were talking about. And they had a point. And just, Jesus said, you're mistaken. Listen what he said. You are mistaken. Not understanding the scriptures. They were using scriptures to make the argument. Or the power of God. We know this. With God, all things are possible. God is never handicapped. His arms are never tied. His arm is never short. He's the God of all power and authority. He speaks the word and it happens. He can change your life in an instant. He can fix what's broken. You just look to him. Let your heart trust in the Lord and say, Lord, I just give my life to you. And I may ask you this honest to God question. Where else are you going? Where, whose hands are you going to place your life in? It's going to be your, you, and who else? better put your hands in, in God. I mean, where, where are you going to put your hands in? Lord, I'm going to trust you. And we're to walk in, listen to this, the joy of believing. It's like, I got it. This is good. This is right. There's two options. Walk by faith or walk in fear. Choose. Fear torments. You're going to be a miserable, tormented person all your life. You're going to know not to, you don't know whether to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Am I going to die or am I going to live? What's going to happen? Is this going to happen? That's going to happen. Is the world going to fall in? That's fear. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. But of love, power, and a sound mind, he gives you his Holy Spirit. Walk in that spirit 24-7. Love God with all your heart and do everything unto him. Anything in you that's grieves or grievous to God, quit and repent and say, God, help me. Strive for perfection. Get rid of this theology. Oh, you can never be perfect. Who said? Jesus died that you would become perfect. You think he died to let you stay in your sins? Little lambs and turtle doves did that. What they couldn't do, what the law couldn't do, weak as it was, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh that died for you that you can become perfected in Christ. You can have perfect love and you can get yourself out of the way and die to self. You can do that. That is available. It's sad. 
that we have so many millions of Christians in the United States who refuse to grow up. You, you, you have this, well, I know about Jesus. Well, I don't care. The devil knows about Jesus, but he's in hell and he's going to stay there. I love Jesus. I follow Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. And I submit to him and I honor his word. And his spirit has opened my eyes to see what the word requires me to do. You know what? It's not rocket science. I don't, you don't have to have 150 IQ to understand the word of God. You just got to have a willing heart. And he'll open your eyes and let you see what you need for your life. Just do it. But know about the power of God. And, and always, and you know, here's a, I pray every day, but I pray this prayer also every day in my prayer. Pray this way, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. What, what a perfect prayer. When I pray that prayer, I go, Lord, this in is just right. I pray all the other stuff, you know. God bless mommy, God bless that, whatever you might pray. But our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Bless you, Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let me see that I, what I need to turn away from. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, forever. Amen. What an incredible prayer. I pray you pray that every day. I have prayer time every day when I go and I get on my knees and take a time of prayer. And, and I wish I could tell you it was ours, but I'm not a prayer warrior. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer warrior. I believe God for everything all the time. But I pray my prayers are short and to the point. And there's times I go, Lord, it's me again, and it's really the same thing that's still on my heart and the same thing I'm still troubled by is the same thing I still want to see you fix, so help me, Lord. But I always got to do the Lord's Prayer because it's like, might mess up the other. You're praying, praying the Spirit, you're not going to mess up. You pray the Lord's Prayer, you're not going to mess up. Some of your prayers might need adjusted, but Lord, give me a new car because you don't take care of the one I gave you and you want me to give you a new one, Get a, take a hike. Our Heavenly Father's good. He's not going to say, oh, yeah, well, here, you're, there, there's no spoiled children in the kingdom. We might spoil our children. He doesn't spoil his children. Bless the Lord. But anyhow, I want you to listen to this power in a different light. And the, what I want you to look at is the power to be conformed to the image of Christ, the power to be brought to maturity. He gives you the Holy Spirit that you can understand the word, that you can grow in grace, that you die to self and live to Christ. That is victory. That is overcoming power. And nobody can stop that. And God can fix your life. He can bless you and fill you with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of who's doing what. He can flood you with that where you can have a comfort in your heart. I know that I know that I know that Jesus loves me because, man, what he put in there, I sure love him. So gathering them together, it says in Acts 1.4, he commanded him not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which you heard, he said, well, excuse me, which he said you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So he's setting up getting ready for Pentecost. And by the way, when Pentecost comes, we'll probably talk more about Pentecost. But listen to this. But you will receive, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea, in Samaria, and even the remotest parts of the earth. And then when Pentecost happened, they all begin to, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving utterance. You talk about a major miracle was going on. People were speaking in tongues, but the audience were from all over the world were hearing in their own language. That's a miracle of God. You know, if God would address the nation and give a speech, every, every dialect would hear it in, in their speech. That's the God we serve. I mean, it's pretty awesome. Can speak multiple languages at one time for the, for, through one mouth. That's a pretty incredible thing that was happening on Pentecost. And you know what? The people in the audience caught on to that. Wow, what is this? So God got our attention. And the truth is, Pentecost was the founding of the church. And we're all supposed to be spirit-filled believers who love God, walk with God, filled with the Holy Spirit, and love God and love one another. But anyhow, now may the God of hope, says in Romans 15, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Let me hear that again. Now may the God of hope, we have a great expectancy that God's going to save you. We have a great expectancy that we're going to inherit eternal life. 
That's the God of hope. That's what we hope for. May he fill you with all joy and peace in what? Believing. Your believing should produce in you joy and peace because I trust God. I, I'm, I'm relying on something that is very reliable, God. I'm depending, I'm putting my life in his hands and he is able. All he has to do is speak the word and it's done. I serve a God who can save me. I serve a God who can fix anything that's wrong in my life. I serve a God who will deal rightly with me whether I go through trials, sickness, or health and strength. Whatever I'm going through, my God has his hand in it and I trust him through that. What do I do in the midst of the, the test and the trials that I go through? I just do whatever is right to do. I trust God, I just do what I know is to do. There's times I've gone through things and there was nothing to do but stand and wait in patience, with patience. You know, you want to be a strong man, be strong in patience. If your wife and your children can get to you quickly, you're not a strong Christian man. You need to have patience and minister out of that patience and bring, and by that strength that's in that patience, minister appropriately to your family. We always want to think like warriors. Well, if you're fighting the enemy, you, you don't scream at the devil. You don't scream at your wife. She's not the devil. You don't scream and act like an idiot among your children. You minister to your children, sometimes firmly, sometimes straightforward, sometimes compassionately, whatever is appropriate, whatever the need, and only love will appraise that appropriately. Your judgmental attitude will appraise things wrong. Love surpasses knowledge. Love knows what's going on. I love that, though. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that I know that I know that Jesus loves me. I know that I know that I know I'm his. I know that I know that I know that I love you because he's put that love in my heart. And the church is to be recognized, but oh, how they love one another. And in the church, we love the strong, the mature, and we love the babes. We love the one who still struggles in their faith, and we love the one who's solid in faith. And we love each one of them appropriately. And we pray for them all because we want to see them all saved. Bless the Lord. Apostle Paul says this, Now I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? We have an inheritance. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe that are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might? And here's where it's going, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. How, what's being conformed to his death? Not my will, but thine be done. You do whatever you believe the will of God is. And by the way, in your everyday life, it's usually... Just live in your everyday life and doing what's right during your everyday life. What's the will of God in your everyday life? Well, things like, like pay your bills. Be nice to your neighbor. Help where you can help. Serve where you can serve. Give where you can give. It's not rocket science, but it's but you do it by faith and you do it. You're not doing it to look good. You're doing it because you love Jesus and you love people and you don't even care if you get the credit for it. that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. But listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is that? Christ in you. The Holy Spirit. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have this treasure in earthen, ve in earthen vessels that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. I am saved because of the working of God. I just trust, believe, and obey, and he does the work. This is what Paul says here. We're afflicted in every way. This is what the apostles went through. And as Christians, we can go through some of this stuff, but not crushed. In other words, you know, you watch the news. It's perplexing what's going on in this country right now. It's like, what in the world is going on out there? But it doesn't change what I do and what I believe and the way I behave. It doesn't change that. We are perplexed but not despairing. Some of you watch the news, you want to, you get so bummed out, you want to leave the country. I'm saying, you're not to be despairing. Why? The government's not our salvation. Jesus Christ is. 
in the way you think about God is though he slain me, so I'll serve him. Whatever I go through, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do what's right to do, and that is to trust the Lord. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted. By the way, persecution has come to the church. And by the way, our country, if we keep going the way we are, believe me, the word of God is going to be persecuted. It's coming. I'm just warning you ahead of time. It's coming. You know, persecuted, but understand this, but not forsaken. God will never leave you or forsake you. You might be struck down, but we're never destroyed. You might take a hit, but so what? You just do what's right to do always in every situation you find yourself in. But what are we to do? I love this. 2 Corinthians 4.10 says this. Always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in the body. I am always to be aware he died for me. My sins are forgiven. And he owns me. He bought me. He purchased me. And I belong to him. And he's to be manifested in my life. We're to glorify him. We're to name his name. We're to exalt Jesus. But most of all, we're to be like him. And what is the, the nature? Come on. The, the nature of Christ is, is Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't taken to a wrong, doesn't count a wrong suffered, doesn't seek its own, is not arrogant, does not boast. That's the love of God. That's what love does. That's, you know, love is just being humble and giving God the glory. And in that, you have the power of God working in your life, protecting you. You have a hedge of protection around you. That the eyes of your mind, heart would be open, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. Where is that strength supposed to be? In your heart. In your heart, unmovable, unshakable, always on the rock, not on sinking sand, not flipping, flip-flopping back and forth, not changing your mind, staying steadfast in the Lord, staying, doing what he would have you to do every day, the rest of your life, till you die. You know, how long do I have to go to church? Till we get raptured or you die. That's how long. How long am I to pray? Uh, until you die. How long am I to serve? Until you can't serve anymore. It's like we're part of an eternal kingdom. It has no end. So get used to that. You know, it's wonderful. Hmm. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be, that, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, height, and depth, and know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Do you know when you get filled up with all the fullness of God, when the love of God just consumes you and you begin to walk in faith and understand things and God will open your mind up, then all of a sudden the seven spirits of God, you'll have a spirit of knowledge, spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding. All these things will come to you and work for you. You can be a spiritual genius if you grow in grace. Jesus knew how to answer every question appropriately. Nobody could trap him. He answered everything exactly right. He did exactly right. He glorified God in everything he did. He never missed it. And I pray as we grow in grace, we don't miss it. I pray you get down to the details. There's times I've gone here and I should have gone there and the spirits tell me do this, but I wanted to hurry up and do my own thing and miss something. I don't know if you even know what I'm talking about, but yeah. You be filled up with the fullness of God that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. We trust God. We know that he's able to work all things for good for those who love him called according to his purpose. Here's what he said to Paul, who the poor guy is persecuted the man paid a price for us. You know, Apostle Paul's the Paul of the Gentiles. We're all Gentiles. He paid, a, he paid a dear price. He even said he made up the sufferings that were lacking in Christ. We saw the price that he paid, what he went through. For he said to me, here's what God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. And then Paul says, most, most likely, therefore, I would rather boast about my weakness that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Then in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. 
The gospel is the power of God. To love one another is the power of God. To be patient is the power of God. To praise God, to worship God, to, to greet one another is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God, and the power of God protects you. The main thing it protects is your salvation. The next thing it protects is you from the devil and from the world. His main job, though, is to get your heart right so you get to heaven. That's why sometimes we go through trials and tests and things that we go through. He's perfecting us. There's things in us that we don't know are wrong. God knows are wrong. He's got to put you in a situation so he can deal with it. So we never bum out when we get in tough situations. You know, we're never perplexed. We know, hey, God, it's in your hands. I'm going to just do what I know to do. Guess what? That's all you can do anyhow. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear, but of power and love and discipline. You know, I was thinking the other day, so many Christians, especially spirit-filled Christians, and I've been there part of, part of this during, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a spiritual Christian. I'm not religious. People always say, I'm not religious. Well, I, you know what? I thought about that. I religiously do a lot of things. I religiously pray every day. I religiously read my Bible every day. I re religiously bless the Lord, but it's real. <laughs> I don't do it hollow or shallow. I put my heart into it. It is, it is what it is. You know, we sometimes, some people aren't religious enough. I'm not religious because I only go to church when I feel like it and the Spirit moves me. Are you sure it's the Spirit? God already told you, forsake not your assembling, so now you need the Spirit to move you? If God told you and you understand, He's not going to tell you again. You know, oh, come on, go to church. Come on, Michael, get out of bed. Pastor, uh, Lord, I don't feel moved. I don't, I don't feel the move of the Spirit to go to church. Hardly anybody's ever moved and, and, and has conviction to tithe. If you all prayed about it and were moved by the Holy Spirit, more people would tithe more than 10%. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. I'm glad, glad you're one guy got it. God always wants you to do more than you think. I hope you understand when we talk about tithing, that's the law, and it's the minimum. Anything under 10 is sin. Anything over 10 is grace. You know, wouldn't you like, you know, there, there are people who said, Lord, if you, if you bless me, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. And there, there's been people in this country who are millionaires and multimillionaires who give 80% of their money to the Lord and to charity because they, that's what they're supposed to do. You know, I think it's a big deal. I give 10%. People go, man, I'm really impressed. Gee, the Jews did that, and they weren't even saved. You know, like, he said, wow. I give you 100%, and you give well, bless the Lord. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. And seeing that his divine nature has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. We can make this work together. We can live this life and be godly and please God at the same time. Through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence, Jesus Christ. Strengthen in all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all, what? What are we trying to attain? The attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joylessly giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints of light who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. When that trumpet sounds, we're going to see this whole thing unfold. So guess what God's going to do by his power? Who will transform the body of this humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things unto himself. You realize Jesus could never die. And he's going to transform our bodies into that. That you'll live and never die again. That's a pretty great reward for walking 70 years, 80 years, 100, whatever you might walk down here, you walk by faith. It's a very good investment. You know, if I invest the time he's given me, and I invest it wisely by walking by faith and honoring God and keeping the commandments and loving his word. If I invest that time, say I live to be 100, do you realize in 100 years I've doubled my investment? In 1,000 years I made a 
hundred times return for my investment in eternity, I forgot that drop of bucket that we called life on earth. But bless the Lord. So we're going to end with these two scriptures. Now to him who is able, we think I'm going to do Jude, but to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. I love you. God loves you. Walk by faith and watch what God does for you. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray we understand that you save us and that we just trust you. For Lord, you said to each is given a measure of faith. So Lord, we have the ability to believe and we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that we see your hand at work and that we grow stronger in faith day by day and that we trust you more day by day, that we testify of your goodness more day by day, that, that we witness to your goodness and kindness and what you've done in our lives. Lord, I pray that the world might see that there's something unique and different about your church, the body of Christ, that we represent you, that they might come to know you through your church, that they might see Christ in each and every person, that they might appreciate the church's behavior and the witness they are to the world. So, Father, let us love one another the way we should, but, Lord, let us reach out to the world, for you died for you because you love the world, that the world might come to know you through the church. So, Lord, give us a boldness to witness. Give us a boldness to share. Give us a boldness to invite people to church, to tell people, come and hear the word of the Lord, that you might grow in grace and be blessed. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Love you dearly. Praise band. <laughs>